Whew. Okay. I'm back and back in this chair. It's a comfortable chair. I feel very good sitting in this chair because uh, it's raining again outside. Can't go outside, do my walk, have to walk around my stairs and everything like that. By the way, yes, I'm still feeling the ramifications of my moping around and kind of eating poorly. Not really bad, but poorly compared to what I was eating before uh, I found out I might have to go for cancer treatments. And then the celebration dinners after finding out I don't have to go for cancer treatments, I'm still feeling <laughs> the ramifications from that. Oh, well, at least I have three months before I have, I'm going to step on a cruise and I can, I can whittle that down between them. But I, I, like I wake up some mornings and I'm just, ah, oh, ah, oh, I feel sluggish. And it's weird because uh, I'm not eating poorly now. I'm eating pretty good. But yeah, wow, what a difference. And, uh, but speaking of travel, um, yeah, the, the border just uh, is staying closed again, extended another 30 days. So right now there is starting to be a lot of pressure mounting from the various states and provinces between Canada and the United States. For instance, here in Ontario, we have a minister who is saying, uh, okay, we, when are we going to start opening up? Because he, his riding is right along Ontario border with the United States. He says during the summer, they get a lot of tourists in there. The United States is approaching 40% fully vaccinated. The CDC is opening up travel in the United States. When can they start allowing people into Canada? Or when can Canadians start going there when we're fully vaccinated? <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry when we're fully vaccinated, uh, we're still at 4%. We're still at 4% fully vaccinated. So uh, yeah, um, <laughs> who knows when that's gonna happen, right? And our Minister of Health and our doctors are saying that they are, they actually held a meeting, an emergency meeting on Friday uh, that just went past on the borders and travel. As you know, here in Canada, if you come into Canada, when you fly in, you have to stay at a quarantine hotel or what they called government approved hotels. It's not a quarantine hotel. It's not a prison. It's not a jail. I don't know if you've seen these quarantine hotels, but they're like lined with sheets down the corridor. Uh, like, like you're walking into the something out of a nightmare from a zombie movie. If you, if you picture those kind of things. Uh, it and doesn't. You know, it's just it's just a quick stay. It costs you two thousand dollars a person. Uh, and in one case, it costs one woman for one night three thousand some dollars. Uh, I don't. I, I can stay at the Waldorf Astoria in a in a suite for that kind of money uh, for a few nights. By the way, not just one night. Uh, and by the way, the food they were getting were like sandwiches, uh, a salmon sandwich, uh, a, a, a tossed salad and you know, like that you would buy at like a garage uh, if you were driving through a truck stop, those kind of foods. So that, yeah, a lot of bad cases of stuff going on. Now, some of the hotels are fine, don't get me wrong, but there have been cases where this is happening. And that's the problem with the quarantine hotels. It's it's all over the place and it's stuff like that. And they are, they are they're quarantine hotels, they're not, government approved residences you can soft soft speak it all you want it's still basically telling people they are being forced into confinement um whether they want to or not right if you say when you land in canada we're going to put you in this place for three days before you go anywhere else that's you're being held you are you are under arrest basically at that point, right? It might be a nice prison. It's still a prison, <laughs> let's be honest. But they say now also that they are studying the borders and they are studying the effects of fully vaccinated. 
Now, here you have to take with a grain of salt when Canada says they're studying something. What they're studying is always other people's results. So when they're studying uh, mixing vaccines, for example, AstraZeneca and Pfizer, when they're studying mixing that and what the results are, they're looking at the UK and Oxford. They're looking for their results and studying their results. When they're looking at the effects of how long between doses, they're looking at other people's numbers. When they're looking at the effects of fully vaccinated people, how can you possibly study that in Canada when you have less than 4% of the people fully vaccinated and the country is still in lockdown in almost every place across Canada? You can't. So they're looking now at the UK fully vaccinated percentages and they're looking at the United States fully vaccinated people and they're looking what's happening there and that's what they're studying. They're not studying their own results and so we have to wait and see what happens in the United States now. So we're looking at the United States and since they're reopening and everything last month um, with the no mask policies and things like that, if there's no huge spike over the next 30 days, then Canada will start to come up with their own plan. And that'll probably take another 30 to 60 days after that. Uh, they are saying that they're hoping to come up with some international guidelines soon, but they're looking at a possibly a fall, a fall answer to when things are gonna happen. See, that's kind of a, a bit of a risk in a way as well, but you have to understand Canada's only vaccinated 4%. Both doses, 4% of our population. So we're not thinking people are going to be fully vaccinated until the fall, September, October, November. We're not going to hit the numbers of 40, 50% fully vaccinated until then. United States has, United States will, that's not the problem. The problem is here in Canada, we're not going to reach that. So when they think about opening the border, think about the timeline they're thinking on opening the border. If they say fall, say September, that's right when school starts, that's right when the cold weather begins to hit, that's right after summer here in Canada, that's right during flu season. That's a very bad time to start opening things up because you don't know if the numbers are going to climb because it's flu season and the change of the weather and all that, or if it's just, you know, it, 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 we don't need to start opening up and then have a huge wave hit us. Yet we have the, we would have had the wave anyway, whether we opened up or not. That's the big thing, right? Because we, you don't know. So more of an, a July and August opening of international travel to fully vaccinated people seems to make more sense. Remember, 40% of Americans have now had both doses. You don't have to wear a mask in the United States now outdoors and when you're traveling around and even in inside places if everyone's been vaccinated, etc. But once again, Canada, we have to study all your results and what's going on in your country or the UK, and then we'll come up with our game plan, which will basically copy your game plan, except it'll take longer. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. And I love the media right now. I love the media out there saying that on a per capita basis, Canada is now out vaccinating the United States. Yeah, no, we're not. You're at 40% double dose, like for both doses of vaccine. We're at 4%. You're opening up. We're under lockdown. Like, don't tell me that we are out vaccinating the United States. Man, they like to try and spin those numbers. And even when they say that they're giving us those numbers, those are, you know, United States says we have this many doses based on our entire population right? Not based on those eligible for vaccines. 
In Canada, we announced our numbers based on eligible for vaccines, which means on a by by person in Canada, that 4% is actually lower than 4% because we're looking at a different metric. If you add in the United, if you take off the people who currently are uneligible for vaccines in the United States, you're losing 45 million people off that number and your number climbs. In Canada, if you add the amount of people, our, our number goes down to around 2.8% of fully vaccinated people. But spin doctors will be spin doctors. I'm hoping to travel in the fall and I hope by then that maybe we can drive across the border and uh, if you're fully vaccinated. We can only hope. But again, it all depends what Canada does. It all depends on the results we see from the United States and the United Kingdom because we don't have any precedent for studying our own cases.